Good afternoon, Springdale. We're here again at the Indian River Middle School. And as we've done in past years, we usually go around and interview some of the participants. So hopefully you'll enjoy today's program. Okay, we're here with uh, Monica and Mandy. And Monica, can you tell us a little bit about uh, your project? It's called the Toby Taste Test. Well, we've done our project to find out what kind of food cockatiels like the best. We thought that it was going to like fresh fruit the best because of where they come from and their habitat, but we were wrong. They actually like cornflakes the best. So you thought they would like apples and, and things like that. Mandy, what, what did you uh, help do with the project and what did you find out? Well, I found out that the bird likes um, cornflakes the best and I didn't really know it before. So. Uh, how did you find out that they like cornflakes? Well, like we put a bunch of foods like bird foods and cornflakes in the cage and he ate most cornflakes. Okay, so that's a good advertisement for uh, Kellogg's Corn Flakes. <laughs> okay, thanks okay, a lot. We're here with Stephen Butt. He's a grade 7 student. And Stephen has his uh, project called The Many Colors of Memory. So Stephen, can you explain to us a little bit about your project and why you did it and what you figured out? Well, I guess what you can say is uh, I think uh, what I did was to see if when you're memorizing things, if the color paper matters. And I tested five different colors, which were white, orange, green, blue, and yellow. Okay. And it turns out what I did was just uh, show people facts for 10 seconds. Yeah. And in each series, they were on a different color paper. The facts were on a different color paper. Okay. And it works something like that. I just compiled all the overall results. Yeah. And it turns out that the best colors out of those five were orange and green. So orange and green paper, do you mean like, uh, can you get a shot of this, Laura? Like that color paper there on the wall? These shades here. Okay, the orange and green were the best. Yes. Out of the five that were tested, they were the best. So if you did you have the same information on five different color sheets? Yes. No, it was five different facts. Okay. But in each series, like yeah. fact number one in series one was on white paper. Okay. But fact number one in series two was on blue paper. Okay. So I kept the same facts but I swapped the colors. Okay. So uh, basically you ended up finding out that this orange, orangish paper yes. is the best. Yes. So what would you uh, recommend to students when they're studying for tests? I guess the best thing you can do is copy down your notes in orange or green. Yeah, that sounds great. Thanks a lot. Thanks so okay, much. we're okay. here with Jonathan Benson. Jonathan, what grade are you in? Grade four. Grade four, and Jonathan's project is called Ice Away. And can you explain to us what you tried to do in this project? I tried to find out what substance smells ice the fastest. Okay, and what did you use to find out? I used avalanche oil smell, table salt, salt and sand, and calcium. Okay, and did salt melt the ice very fast? No. Which was the fastest thing that melted the ice? Calcium. Calcium. Can you show it to us in your little container here? Okay, get a shot of that, Laura. This is the calcium that melted the ice. So what would you tell people if they got an icy driveway? What would you tell them they should use? Calcium. Okay, thank you, Jonathan. We're here with Joshua Seward and Joshua Blundell, and they're both grade four students, and they did an, a very interesting experiment about DNA. And the purpose of their experiment is to get DNA from an onion. So Joshua Seward, can you explain to us what you did and why you did it? Well, the first thing we did was gather all of our ingredients for yeah. the first part. Mm -hmm. We put our onion into my mom's blender, which is probably not any good anymore. Okay, you can bring that out, Joshua, if you want to show, to bring out the things you did. Okay. So, Joshua, you put the onion in the blender. Okay. What did you do next? We, uh, okay, you can go ahead, Joshua. Uh, we, uh, after we put the onion, we had to put uh, one fourth of um, warm water in and add a teaspoon of salt. Okay, so how did you actually get the DNA of the onion out? What did you do? Uh, after we was finished that process, yeah. we took it and we put it in the filter. Okay. And as it drained out, it, tur it actually turned into a little bit of the DNA. Yeah. And we had to take meat tenderizer. Okay. And we poured it in, two teaspoons. Yeah. And we took some rubbing alcohol and put on it. Okay, so do you have a little sample of the yes, onion? Do. Okay, you want to hold that up? You want to get a shot of that, Laura? Okay, yeah, let's see. Hard. 
So that's the onion DNA. Yep. So did you enjoy doing your experiment? Oh, yes, very much. Do you think you're going to get a good mark on it? I think I you're hope. going to get first prize. Oh, do you? Who's your teacher? Uh, Miss Bissell. Miss Bissell, okay. So we'll see what happens. Okay, Thank you. I'm here with April. And April, what grade are you in? Four. Okay, we got a few grade fours today. And the name of her experiment is the magic balloon and bottle. What was your purpose of the experiment? You want to look at that? You can read it if you like. Our purpose is to see what happened to the balloon as it, the bottle cooled. Okay, so what did you think would happen? I thought the balloon would blow up. Okay, so you thought the balloon would blow up. Can you give us a demonstration? You can get that, Laura. Okay. You thought the balloon would blow up. Yeah. And what's in this? That's cold water. Okay. So it doesn't look it doesn't look like the balloon is blowing up. No, it's looking down. See? Oh. Wow. So what ended up happening to the balloon? It gets stuck inside the bottle. And do you know why that happens? It was that part of your experiment to figure out why or just you just figured out that that's what it did? Yeah. Okay, so your conclusion was that your project didn't turn out the way you expected. No. You thought the balloon was going to blow up. Yeah. Okay, so did you enjoy doing your project? Yeah. Good. It was very fun. Okay, thanks. Oh, great. That's great. It's gone right inside. Can you get a shot of that? That's really good, April. But your friend was Charmaine. She was too shy to go on the camera, was she? Yeah. Okay, well, thank you for participating. Okay, I'm here with uh, Andrew Tizard, and he's in grade 8. And his uh, project is about hydraulics. So, uh, Andrew, can you explain a little bit about uh, what you did and give us a demonstration? Uh, just get different weights and seeing which one can hold the most. Hi. Okay. Uh, can you just uh, give us a demonstration of this one uh, right here? Yes, this one's 200 grams. Yeah. Okay. So what is it you're doing here with uh, what is it you're doing here with these syringes? Why did you? Uh, what's the purpose of those? To push the water up to go through the syringe to push up and this one, okay. which is the weight. Okay, so you actually have the syringe connected to this little bar here. Okay, could this uh, could this one lift up a uh, thousand grams? Okay, let's try it. Okay, Andrew's going to try to lift a thousand grams now. Oh yeah! Wow, that's really good. A thousand grams. Yeah. Uh, what about? Did you have this one hooked up too? This this one here? Okay. This is a smaller syringe, right? Yeah. So Andrew, would the uh, would this smaller syringe here, uh, would that actually be able to lift this thousand one? No, it's too heavy. Okay. So uh, did you enjoy did you enjoy doing this project? Yep. Who, who helped you build these things? Uh, my dad. Yeah, that's great. It's good to have mom and dad I involved in it too, hey? Okay, thanks a lot. Okay, we're here with uh, Daniel Saunders. And Daniel, what grade are you in? I'm in grade eight. Okay, and you did a project on electromagnetism. So what was what was it you were trying to prove in this project? I was trying to prove if you put the more coils you put on around a nail, you more uh, staples you'll pick up. Okay, so uh, first, how many did you have wrapped around there? Uh, first off, well, this one here is the smallest one, 15. Okay. I think I think that one went off. that one there I only picked up. Well, I didn't pick up any. Okay, you couldn't get any staples yeah. picked up with that. Okay. And then, so, then, so, we tried with 25. Okay. And what do you have it hooked up to? Six volt battery. Okay. So, we, hook, we hooked that on. And when we, put, when we lift that one up, when we came in the room, first time, we, uh, or some millions, a uh, couple times, yeah. we got 35 volt. And then so we tried the biggest one. Okay, how many coils were on this uh, big one here? We got uh, 65 coils. Okay. So we put it on. Uh, Daniel, what kind of wire is that wrapped around that nail? I okay. don't know. Copper wire. I think yeah. it's, yeah. It, looks like, it looks like copper wire. Yeah. I thought it was too. Okay. So, well, we put this on. Let's, we'll see how many uh, stables you can pick up now. 
not very much. Not as much as I would think. What does your turret show there when you use 65 coils? We picked up 40 of them. Okay. And then in 25, we pick up 35. And then, and then in 15, we only uh, picked up zero. Stable. And we tried that like a lot of times. It still couldn't pick none up. Okay, so you proved that the more coils you have, yeah. the more staples you pick up. Yep. Okay, you enjoy doing your project? Yeah. Good. Who helped you with it? Did mom help you? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Most kids got their parents' help. I think I think the parents learned a lot this year at this science fair. Thanks okay, a lot, Daniel. We're here with uh, Megan Blackler and Jenny Upward, and they're both in grade five. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Their project is called Density in Nature. So, uh, Megan, can you tell me uh, what you were, uh, what the purpose of your project was? You can read it if you like off your thing. Um, to show how atoms work and to show destiny. Okay, to show density, yeah, that's okay. Now, Jenny, can you explain to us what you did and what's in these bottles? Well, um, well, there's oil and water and maple syrup in the bottle. Okay. We pour the maple, s the oil in the bottle first. Yeah. And and um, we, then we poured it in the water. Okay. So what happened to the water when you poured, you poured in oil first? And what happened to the water? Because it looks like the water is on this level. Well, the water pushed up the oil. Okay. And then what is this brown stuff down here? That's the maple syrup. Okay. So, Megan, what did you, when you had the three levels, like the oil and the water and the maple syrup, what did you put in your bottle then? And um, we put the rock in. And where did the rock go? Down to the bottom. Uh, what is that little green thing in the middle there? Grape. And what did the grape float on? The maple syrup. Okay, Jenny, uh, what else you got in there? Well, we got an egg and a cork. Where is the, where is the cork? Um, right up there okay, on top. Can we get a shot of that, Laura? Oh, yes, in the popsicle stick. Yeah. So, uh, can you tell us the, what floated on what level? The cork and the... The popsicle stick. Yeah, the popsicle stick. Well, they float on the top. And what is on this top level? Oil, is it? Vegetable yeah. oil? Okay. Vegetable oil. What floated on the uh, water level? An egg and a grape. And what floated on the corn syrup? Or did anything float on the corn syrup? No. Okay, and what is that right down the bottom? A, a rock. Okay, so the rock went right down through the different, all the different liquids. Did you enjoy your project, Megan? Okay. Yeah. Thanks a lot, girls. Okay, we're here with Carissa Burton, and she's in grade seven, and she did her project on atmospheric pressure, but she also talked about how your lungs work. So, Carissa, can you just explain to us, like, your backboard there says the mechanics of breathing? Can you show us your, your project and explain it? Well, um, the way you breathe is when you breathe in, your lungs fill up with air because okay. your diaphragm moves down so that the air can go in your lungs. Okay, so which part of this model is your diaphragm? Um, can you hold it up so she can get a shot of it? That there's a diaphragm right there. Okay, so what, what happens to the diaphragm? Like, the diaphragm got to move down in order for it to breathe in. Okay, so when the diaphragm moves down... What happens to these lungs? The lungs fill out with air. Okay. So, um, how did you, uh, how did you, who helped you make your little person here? My mom. Okay, so did you enjoy doing your project? Yep. Uh, is there anything else you want to tell us about your project? Well, when you breathe out, the diaphragm got to push up. Okay, so when... The air to go out. Okay, so when air goes out of your mouth or your nose, yeah. your diaphragm actually goes got up. To push up. Okay, thanks a lot, Carissa. Okay, yep. uh, we're here with uh, Nicholas Kosh, and he did a project uh, called Juicy Fruit. And Nicholas, can you uh, tell us what the purpose of your project was? My purpose was to find out how much juice was in different kinds of fruit. Okay, so what types of fruit did you use? Uh, we used kiwi, banana, apple, lemon, pear, orange, peach, which we don't have, okay. um, watermelon, honeydew, and cantaloupe. Wow, that's a lot of fruit. Did you get hungry when you were doing this project? Yes. As you can see, I ate some of it. Which fruit did you think would have the most juice? I thought it would be watermelon because 
Well, I've heard that it actually has 95% water. Okay, yeah, I've heard that too. So let's get a look at your result. I uh, showed that kiwi had 84.5%, pear had 84%, orange had 80.9%, cantaloupe had 91.9%, watermelon had 89.1%, peach had 88.2%, Apple had 83.8%, lemon had 77.8%, honeydew had 92%, and banana had 59 So how did you actually do this though, uh, Nicholas? How did you figure out uh, the highest one there is on honeydew melon? How did you figure out that that had the most juice? Um, we weighed all the fruit, and then we dried them out with a food dehydrator, and then we weighed them again. Yeah. And then we found the difference and changed the percent. Wow, that's an excellent way to do it. Okay, thanks a lot, Nicholas. Okay, the name of this project is called A Race to the Finish. And uh, we, we have Nicole Gowdy here and Sarah Whalen, and they're both in grade seven. Uh, Nicole, can you explain to me the purpose of your project? Um, we wanted to see if boys or girls were faster at running through an obstacle course. Okay, so is this a model of the obstacle course? Yeah. And where did you have this take place? The primary school gym. Okay, so can you explain, Sarah, can you explain to us a little bit about what this obstacle course is? Okay, well, they're just stuff we found in the equipment room, and we just set it up. So they ran through the pylons, okay. and they jumped over the hurdle. Yep. They went around this puff, okay. and they jumped like funny hat sort of thing from that those. Okay. They did a somersault on the blue floor mat, okay. and they had the bouncy ball, and they bounced, and they crawled under this. And they did the tire thing, okay. set up, and then they ran to the end, and we taught, we finished timing when they touched that. Okay, so how many, uh, like you used a group of girls and a group of boys, about how fast did it take them? Oh, well, average was about 30 seconds. Is there right to go through all of that? Uh, Nicole, do you actually participate in this? Uh, obstacle gr course? Well, we ran through with them, so... Okay, you guys, like, you girls were actually timing it. Yeah. Who did you think would win? The boys. Oh, so your conclusion was correct? How did you figure out that the boys were faster? Well, we just found the average of all the boys in each class okay. and all the girls, and then we just compared the averages. Can you explain that chart a little bit? Okay. Well, these are all the average times, yeah. and so this one would be their average time for boys was 40.53 okay. seconds, yeah. and then so on. So you went right up to grade three, and you did the average of boys and girls, and the boys won. Yeah. Oh, well, that's it, folks. We got to admit that the boys are a little bit faster on an obstacle course than the girls. So thanks a lot, girls. We're here with uh, okay. Carrie and Cole and Shepard, and they did a project called Which Drink is the Most Acidic, Pepsi or 7-Up? Carrie, can you explain how you figured that out? We went through seven days, and every seven days we pick, pick it up and turn different colors. Because well, we put it in the, in the drink. Okay. This one here was the 7-Up. Yeah. This one here was the Pepsi. Yeah. And we kept it in for 21 days. And when we took the Pepsi out, it turned. This is the new nail. Okay. And when we turned it out, it was black. Okay. And then the Seven Up turned almost like um, a yellowish color. Okay. So, uh, Cold and uh, wh which one did you figure out was the had the most acid in it? Well, uh, it was Pepsi because it was more acidic in it. We, uh, as you can see there, we, after 21 days, we found out that. Uh, that the Pepsi was the most acid. Okay, so which drink which drink do you think you would rather drink? 7-Up. Yeah, because 7-Up got less acid in it. Okay, thanks a lot for your project. Okay.